Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial building off of the Django speedrun. What the Django speedrun was, it's a tutorial series where we were able to dockerize what is a Django application. We set up the Postgres database within this Docker container along with the Django application itself. Now we are trying to dive into Django. We were able to get what is the template set up for Django, but now we need to work with dynamic data. The best way to explain this is to start with the basics. The basics is, is Django comes out of the box with user authentication. It creates what is this user model in relation to what is the user that is logging into your application. It's really bare bones. It provides a username, a password, an email, and that's about it. Now, if we would like to provide more information in regards to the user, we can go about creating a new app within the Django application. The way we could do that is by running a command in the terminal. It is python manage.py start app, and we are going to refer to the app name that we are trying to create. For me, I'm going to create what is this account. So I ran that command and I created what is this account app. Within that, I had to connect this account app to the overall Django application. You can go into the settings and you can provide a direct connection to this application by referring to the name of the new app that was created, which is the same as the file name. And then you're running apps and then you're going to run uh, the name and dot config. And I'll show that as I am explaining it. But with that, if I dive into what is this new app that I created and connected, I can go into the models. And within the models, you can see that I have this import that is Django contrib dot auth models import user. This is needed to build off of the base user model that is already provided. This refers to the instance of the person that is logged into your application, and it allows you to build models on top of what is their user profile. So for me, I created what is this account profile that represents valuable information in relation to my user. For instance, if I scroll down, you create a class in regards to setting up this model. This model is going to refer to the user that I just referenced in a foreign key. This foreign key is a direct one-on-one -on -one relationship to the user model that is already established within Django. Now, I have included a lot of other models on top of this. I add what is an avatar to represent an image that will display and show the user what they are, who they look like on the application. Now, I did throw in a little bit of magic in regards to doing the upload to different than just a direct connect. I was able to create what is this function that is an avatar upload to. It takes the instance of being ran and it takes the file that is provided through this model whenever it is uploaded and it is running what is the username and it's grabbing the instance of the user that is trying to upload the content. Then it's going into this folder and it's creating a folder underneath avatars and the username. So as I add multiple users, it's going to create folders within what is this avatars folder of their user name and it's going to upload their recent newest pictures representing their avatar to that location to show this and the context i'm going to dive into the media as you can see i have this avatar that is in relation to right up here and you can see that i have my user and he's uploaded a bunch of different pictures but the magic will happen and it will select the right and most recent one so it doesn't matter that they are all being uploaded it doesn't matter if the file being uploaded is named the same as you can see it will add name casing to the back end of the file being uploaded if there's already one created so with that i basically return an OS path that's pointing to the folder and file name and that's getting uploaded too. So I've also included what is this URL which I'll talk a little bit more about in a little bit. I added a description and I added a bunch of different links that represent the user's social media account so that they can show off their presence online and so that other people can connect to what is their work. Outside of that, I have added this 
credits system that is in regard to credits in relation to their account. It's a way for me to add funds, see how many funds are currently on their account, and so that they can extract it later on in the application as it evolves. I've also jumped into what is this QR image. This QR image is another image field, which is an upload to, and instead of going the path of uploading it to their username, I could, but I just set it up so that it is going by the year, the month, the day that the user was created, and it's uploading it to a file and representation of that. So I can show that through the media over here. I can dive into that. And as you can see, they've uploaded on a few different dates. We're on the first of the year. They uploaded one on the third. And as you can see, this is what was uploaded. It's basically referring to the URL up above, and it's creating a QR code to represent it. So for me, I know that this is the base URL and I will be able to edit it later on through a view, through the upload state as I continue down what is this path of development. But I would add what is a slash users, you know, and I would refer to their username and I would make sure that there is a page representing that within the application. And what this does is going into my back end, you can see that in the admin portal, I have a representation of everything that I have been describing in regards to the profile of the user. I have their profile image, I have their username, I have a default, which is the uh, QR code, which if scanned, will take the individual to the link that was provided. I have the credit system and I have a theme representing what theme they would like to render the application as, as I can cycle these themes to different styling depending on their preferences. And we will expand on these topics later on. This video is just about the models. We can edit this by going into the link provided. We can upload a new picture as I go over here. I can upload any picture that I want. I'll just add myself and I will give a description, give all the other information. You could change the theme from here. And the QR image, you don't need to provide anything. The way that I have this set up in the application is I am running what is this at properties that is automatically creating what is an admin image to represent this QR code. It's taking what is the URL, it's providing it within the context of this QR image, and it's automatically making it. And I did the same thing in regards to setting up an admin photo. The reason why you would like to set up admin photos in what is this property tag is so that whenever you go into the back end, and I'll show this whenever I save this real quick, you can see that it changed the image to me. Uh, you can see that I have the QR image without setting up this admin photo property in relation to your admin side of things, you're not going to be able to automatically see these images. You'll just see a link in representation of these images. So setting up this way, it makes it a cleaner way of quickly seeing what people have uploaded, understanding the data in front of you from a backend developer admin perspective. So with that, diving back into the code, I have this save, which is automatically creating all the QR stuff. It's referring to the URL, which is up above, and that's going over here. It's taking that URL, it's creating a canvas for my QR image, and it's setting the size to 369, 369, because it's a funny number. Just kidding. It's just the best way that I saw of rendering what is this QR image. I've tried other numbers like 350, uh, 400, but the QR image doesn't appear just right. And I'm trying to make it as clean and concise as possible. So 69 is the number. Regardless, I am drawing it within this image draw and I'm pasting the image that was drawn into the canvas. And I'm setting the file name, a QR code in relation to QR dash the URL, and then it's adding some trailing and a .png. 
So there's a little bit of other magic in regards to the buffer, which saves the PNG, the canvas size, which is referring to the buffer. And we are referring to a self.save to the file name, the file buffer, and we are closing what is this canvas. We're running a super, which is referring to the args and the cargs of other metadata in relation to this picture, and it's just saving it alongside it. So with that, I am able to show uh, everything through setting the QR photo, the description, uh, the allow tags are true, and in return, I am giving this def uh, string, which is returning the user, just showing that it was saved and everything worked. So with that, I hope that this gives some insight into how you can set up a more complex um, profile for your Django users. And it's something that you can alter and change and build off of. You can add any different model that you can think of from images, booleans, floats, um, integers. There are a lot of different options available. But you basically just add a reference to it. Then you need to go into your account or the app that you made the model in and you will go into the admin.py within the admin.py you have the availability to add what is context to your admin portal in relation to the model so we can go over here we can create a class that is profiles and it's referring to uh, admin model admin we're giving a list of the information that we would like to display. I have the admin photo, the user, the QR code, the credits, and the theme. I don't need all of the user's information automatically displayed on the admin portal, as there is a lot of more information that's just gibberish that I don't need to understand at a direct glance of the user, where this is the most important stuff. I give a list display link, which is in reference to the user. I give a list editable, which is in reference to the credits, if I want to quickly edit the credits of a user. And then I'm giving a search field in relation to the user so that I can search what is the users on my application. I'm giving a list per page, which maximizes how many users can be displayed on one admin screen. And you would have to go through uh, other you know, pages and it would cycle through like one page gets 25, second page gives 50, third page gives the 75 and so on. Then we are registering it with an admin site dot register. This is in reference to the import above that is from Django Contrib and we are importing admin. We are passing through the profile, which is the initial model that we are bringing into this admin dot py. Then we are referring to the profiles, which is in reference to this class profiles. So what we are getting out of this, going back into the application, is this screen right here, and it would allow me to have listed more users. I have the ability to search users by typing in up here. So if I type in UUU, I search it, it's not a thing. It's not gonna let me, it didn't, it didn't work. I can see that the credits are editable over here. So I can go into 99, I can save that. And then if I go into the user, you can see that it was all saved automatically. So that's why you would create an editable field in what is your user. You also have the ability to add users and relationships from the ad profile. I can go into here, I can select the user, I can go into the avatar, I can fill out more information and I can add more users as more users are registered within my application. So with that, this is the overview of why, how you can set up a more advanced profile model on top of the base user model provided by Django. I hope that this was valuable information and useful. And with that, like, subscribe, see you in the next one.